Hi, my name is Habiba. For those of you that are new here, last month I cut off all my relaxed hair and now I have a teeny weeny afro. But guess what? Sometimes you want a little bit of hair. So today we're going to be making a headband wig. An easy grab and go headband wig. So this is Habiba 2.0. <laughs> she is a U-part wig that I made several years ago. This is in deep hair. Right now it's looking very rough. But when I'm done with it, she's going to look cute. So my whole point is to show you an affordable way to make a wig without having to go and buy new hair. This is old hair in deep hair. And this was the relaxed straight. So this hair blended in really well with my hair so if I didn't want to comb my hair or I didn't want to put heat to it I would wear this U-part wig and have a huge leave out. Now right now I cut my hair off I um, don't have a long enough leave out my hair is not straight so I am going to turn this hair into a headband wig. So that's what we're going to do. So the first thing you're going to need is a canvas head like this one. This is a professional canvas head which you can get at any beauty shop. And you see I got the stand with it. Um, it secures to any surface. It can secure to a table if you like. So I really like it. it. Prevents the head from wobbling all over the place and gives you a little bit more control. This canvas head though is fairly large. I opted for the large one. Um, it's a lot bigger than my head, which is okay, but what's important is that the circumference is, um, you know, about the size of your head or a little larger for your wig. You can get one of these, which is a lot cheaper from the beauty shop. Uh, very cheap foam. It's a lot smaller, as you can see, although it does have the hole on the bottom, so you can also secure it to a stand. So you're gonna need a wig cap, and there are different types sold at the beauty shop. I just kinda got a couple. So going to need your headband, okay? So this is what it looks like. It comes like this. Super cheap, 99 cents from my beauty shop. Why are people spending hundreds of dollars on these, uh, headband wigs when you can make it yourself nothing major to it this is a wig band so you know after you make the wig you want it to secure well to your head you can either use a wig band or you can use velcro my store or beauty shop that i went to they didn't have the velcro so i ended up buying this wig band instead we'll see i may or may not use it you might also need some wig clips some people don't like wig clips um, there are these that snap on. Um, sometimes these can pull out your hair if you're not careful where you put them. But these are easy to put in. These um, spring wig clips. 99 cents. You're going to also need some T-pins to secure your wig cap to your uh, head or dough. Of course, you will need a comb and scissors and whatever hair you're using. This was the hair that I took out or dismantled from my old wig, my old U-part wig. And these are the smaller pieces. I just tried to separate them so I could see that these were the smaller cut wefts. Again, keep in mind that this hair is years old, literally years old, but it's really good hair. And so I'm gonna reuse it. on now I'm going to go ahead and push in the t-pins to make sure it's on securely to the form and that it's not going to move now I'm taking the headband I'm cutting it in the middle and I fold it in half to show me the halfway point and then I secure it to the uh, wig cap make sure the seams on the headband that you're attaching is facing upward that way when you fold it over you're not gonna see that seam it will make sense you'll see <laughs> and then also you see where I am putting the headband it's not going to be sewn directly on the wig caps headband it's going to be sewn along the 
border of the previous headband. Just follow along and you'll see it will make sense. Go ahead and secure the band with the T-pins as you see and again you can see the seam is facing outward. I leave two ends at the back so that I can close it when we're done. So you're putting it on making sure that you're not going to sew the entire headband in the back. This is the front of the wig. I'm just sewing it down um, using this curved needle and uh, I have double thread. If you prefer a straight needle, you can do that, but I think it's easier to work with a curved needle just like you would as with a sew-in or if you were making a lace front wig. So try to keep your stitches close together because um, you want this headband to be secure and not to, you know, not to rip later. All right, I just wanted to show you the back, even though this is a fuzzy clip, that you can see where I stopped, you know, in terms of sewing. So again, that's the front, and this is the back. We're going to go ahead and add our first track. Make sure you secure it properly with the T-pins where you want it before you start sewing. Just makes it so much easier and again these wefts are previously cut because this is hair that's been used before if you were using a brand new you know brand new hair you probably may not choose to cut the wefts I'm also here trying to make sure that I secure the hair tightly by making sure I put several knots in it and sometimes the hair will get tangled as you go and you just take your hands or take a fine comb and comb it through and just keep going. So I'm just speeding it up here because that's what we're going to keep doing. Just sewing <laughs> what feels like a gazillion tracks. But I actually wanted a normal looking density. So here is the first track on and it looks pretty secure. You can see I'm going to tug on it and it's not going anywhere. You could do this whole wig a lot faster if you glued it in, you know, if you were using cheap hair or if you're using beauty shop hair and you didn't care, you could definitely just use glue instead of sewing it in. But I prefer the sewing it in because it also lasts longer. You can wash this hair. Um, you treat it just like you would your own hair and um, it's not gonna get destroyed. Whereas you can't really wash properly a wig that you have glued tracks to. Okay, so I continue to sew around the head, making sure to secure the stitches. Um, as you can see, it starts to form a U shape as you work your way up the top of the head. I am not doubling up the wefts because I wanted a very natural density to this wig. I want it to look believable like it is my hair because as you can see, the texture really mimics relaxed hair. As we get to the top, it forms a smaller U shape and again, I just keep adding more wefts and um, the smaller pieces of wefts that I had previously cut uh, work really well on the top. So here you can see it looks more like a V than it does a U shape, but it's looking pretty flat. I'm almost done here. This is actually the following day because I took a break. Um, I kind of worked two hours at a time and then I started the next evening so we got the last little piece being sewn on to cover our little hole here and it's all gonna come together you will see I can't wait to show you some other wigs I will make later um, using crochet hair and also using uh, beauty shop hair but anyway this is looking good so far and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, trim some of the edges or trim some of the ends, sorry. Um, this hair was previously cut so it already has a layered look uh, because this is, you know, previously used wefts. But I'm just getting rid of, rid of any straggly ends. Okay, we're done and I was trying to cut off the tight band that is under, you know, the um, added headband but it is so much easier to do if you take the wig off the head first. So that's what I'm doing here, removing the T-pins, removing the wig, and then just cut off 
you know, the entire super tight headband that was on there. I'm also going to add wig clips and Velcro and we're done. So excited to try her on. Just showing you the inside of the wig. As you can see, I have three, uh, you know, wig uh, combs in there. We have two in the front and one in the back and you can choose to use this or not but it's helpful sometimes you can also see the headband and i have added the velcro um, you know ideally i would use black velcro even though you're really not going to see it but again i could not find black velcro in the store so i used what i had but it will work okay look at those rough edges gonna add some edge control and I could have used heat to blend it in more, but I'm trying to avoid heat. So just using a little bit of edge control. On she goes and let's see. Now in the beginning, she might not look that good. Okay, you're gonna have to finesse this wig. <laughs> you're gonna have to figure out how to make it look believable. All right, so you're gonna have to tuck your edges in a little bit, make sure the comb is on there securely and tuck it in and then put the hair up in a bun. That will help you to uh, put the Velcro in the back. Okay, making sure that the comb is in properly and then securing the Velcro. Okay, and we're done. What a difference makeup and hair does, right? Just add my little hoop earrings and she is ready. What do you think? <laughs> I was loving it and I think it looked very natural it looked very similar to what my hair looked like before I cut it and what's great about this hair or wig is that you know you can just grab it and go all right it is the easiest protective style you don't even need to show your edges if you don't want to or if you don't have any all right so let's try this headband and see how this looks not bad of course it would look even nicer if it were a wider headband like this one which is a little bit more ornate so i'm going to try this and let's see how this looks of course they have so many options of headbands nowadays fabric headbands or you know you could use a head scarf whatever you like okay i'm just going to comb it out and straighten it so adding some mousse and that's what's great about human hair. You can treat it just like your own. So I'm just straightening it here to see what it looks like. Bone straight. Now what if we curled it? Okay, so let's show you what it looks like curled. I did one side and then I was like, should I do the second side? Should I bother? Okay, for you I will. We'll do both sides. So here she is. It is done. Let's add a little bit of lipstick. This is Ruby Roo by MAC. I wanted to darken it a little bit, so I used a little drugstore lipstick. Okay. Just a little reminder of what I looked like before. And now. So let's loosen up the curls. Get them looking a little bit more natural and flowy so i hope you've been inspired and you might consider you know saving your coins and making your own wig next time <laughs> if you're into wigs or you just want to switch things up uh, because sometimes your natural hair needs a break or you just want something different okay so definitely find me on instagram and on my blog which i listed previously She's looking cute, right? Not bad for a 50-year-old woman. Can you believe it? Yes. Anyway, the top of the wig looks very natural, and I thought you would appreciate me showing you what it looks like outside. So this is what it looks like outside. Very natural, and as you can see, it's not as dark as it looked inside. It has a lot of brown highlights in it. So love it, and I hope you did too, and I look forward to sharing another video with you soon. Bye. <laughs>